Welcome to Miss Martin Muses. Welcome to Miss Martin Muses, where we muse upon what makes me laugh, makes me cry, makes me happy, makes me sad, or just really ticks me off. Well, today we're going to talk about something that maybe really ticks me off in the sense of these things scared the living daylights out of me in my childhood, and that are fairies, but more specifically, Irish fairies. Way back when, back in the days of my youth, when I was a little, little Teresa, the small little rosebud, I was told stories about fairies. We would read about these beings in school, and children, we would scare each other with tales of their antics that resulted in not a few sleepless nights for me. This fairy-inspired terror particularly recurred when I cycled home from piano lessons on dark winter afternoons. The root brought me to a clump of bushes and trees, and as I passed, I would pedal as hard as I could, looking away from the dreaded patch, entirely convinced a fairy was waiting for me. More specifically, this fairy, the Banshee. She would appear and start shrieking at me, why would she be shrieking at me? Because somebody I knew, somebody I loved, was going to die. Because that's what the Banshee does. And she has a bone-chilling keen. Here she is pictured in a traditional attire as an old lady in her grief, waiting to shriek at a young child just as trying to ride home on her bike. And if you don't fear that you're going to see the banshee well you've never been in ireland in the dark by yourself sometimes she also is shown weeping i saw that in one of the sources i read about fairies but a good friend of mine her mother swears that she saw the banshee back when she was a teenager she would tell us of walking home from school in the dark and as she rounds the corner, she sees an old lady combing her hair and silently weeping. She didn't hear the scream. I remember asking her, well, what did you do? She said, I pretended I didn't see anything and just stepped around her and walked home as fast as I could. She says, you don't communicate with them. You just move on. And sure enough, two days later, an uncle of hers passed away. I'm not saying I believe in these stories. I'm just reporting. But from where do these fairies come? And what motivates them to interact with us at all? There actually are many different beliefs about their origins. One version tells how the fairies were part of the epic battle described in the Bible when certain angels rebelled against God. The fairies were the ones who remained neutral, and so they were not granted a place in heaven, but neither were they granted a place in hell. So God allowed these fairies to dwell in between on earth with humans, but apart in secret dwellings. These fairies then came to resent people because of the favored status God gave them. So their antics, which I'm about to describe, were inspired by envy. Another theory asserts that fairies are manifestations of demons, the minions of Satan, whose goal is to ruin people's souls so they go to hell after death. Whatever the specifics about these origins, the beliefs about fairies, which were held in common, is that they wish people ill and harsh consequences await those who toy with them. How do they toy with us? Well, I've already told you one, the banshee, but others mess around with, by bringing about our deaths. They do it by luring people to a precipice or a hole in a bridge, which will result in fatal injuries. Others will confuse people at night so they will wander aimlessly through the dangerous countryside to the point of madness. But I'll tell you what really messed with my brain when I was a kid. 
changelings. Yes, precious. These are fairies who come and kidnap children in the night, steal them away from their families, and they'll never know because they replace you with a changeling who will look and talk just like you. Your sisters, your brothers won't know demonic entities have taken your place. Fairies will also spoil meat, steal portions of your milk so that it'll sour and you can't make butter. For this reason, humans need to keep the fairies happy to ensure that they don't become a target. What can we do? Well, you can feed the fairies. Just leave out some food and water for them, some milk. When crumbs fall off your table, you let them be. The fairies will eat them and then they'll be happy with you. Don't mess with their dwellings, so-called fairy forts. You'll find them all over the countryside. More often than not, these are the ruins of stone circle or pre-Christian burial mounds. Sometimes the early Christian settlements were mistaken as fairy forts. They didn't know better. The positive part of this is no one wanted to screw with where the fairies lived and be stolen away and never seen ever again. So you don't venture near them. You don't touch them. You don't build over them. If you do so, you could bring dire consequences, not just upon you, but also the locals, the community. The happy part is that these superstitions of old and even <laughs> perhaps living into today is these ancient monuments have been preserved for posterity because people didn't destroy them. I've already spoken about feeding the fairies to keep them happy. You can also, though, use some typical Christian remedies. Take them holy water, spray it around. Why not? Say prayers of protection. To prevent your bread from being ruined, draw the sign of the cross on the dough. This picture I took in a normal supermarket. You'll still find it there. It's fun stuff. Was it had a practical purpose? I'm sure it does. But isn't that how a lot of customs superstitious or otherwise get popularized. If you want to protect your child from being abducted and to become a changeling, you take an article of clothing from the father and place it over your child when they go to sleep at night. The most important thing you can do to not make a fairy mad is to don't use the word fairy like I just did. Call them the good folk. I've also heard them referred to as the people. True story. I was explaining this on a tour to a companion. And he was like, why can't you just say fairies? I'm like, well, because here fairies. And then I like trailed off. The bus driver, he was cocking his head. I was sitting in the front row, so I was able to meet his eyes in the mirror. And I said, we're not supposed to say the name, are we? And he goes, no. We don't use that name for the people. As I've said, I don't believe in fairies unless I'm in Ireland. I've already told you about the Banshee and the Changelings. Let's go through a few more. I'm citing as my source the Field Guide to Irish Fairies. Arguably the most famous is the Leprechaun. Leprechauns are frequently intoxicated. They carry money with them and when it's spent, it will turn magically to their purse. So never accept money from a leprechaun. Leprechauns can be cobblers. They are also the bankers in the fairy world. Leprechauns tend to avoid contact with us because they think we're dumber than rocks. The Dullahan. This is the Irish fairy version of the headless horseman. But what makes this one worse than your average headless horseman? If he sees you watching him, as he rides by, he will throw a bucket of blood in your face. And if you're really unlucky, he will strike you blind, which is not fun. There's a Grogak who looks like a really ugly old troll. This fairy is unique because you want to get rid of him, not necessarily because he's going to hurt you, but he will annoy the living daylights out of you. Yeah, he likes to hang around the house and you can't get rid of him unless you give him some cream from your milk. And he'll leave and it'll be very sad. Another way that you can get rid of him is he doesn't tolerate priests. So you just bring a priest to visit. That'll get rid of him. Okay, we've got the puka, another ugly one. 
when he comes around, he will prevent your chickens from laying eggs or your cows from giving their milk. He will also mess with you if he comes upon you in the middle of the night. He'll throw you around. The marrows! Just as you can see here, the marrows are mermaids. Who doesn't love a mermaid? They can come ashore, but they have to take off their cloaks, seal skin cloaks, or their cap. And if you find those clothes, you can keep them captive because they cannot return to the sea until you return it to them. As always, I would not recommend doing so. You don't want to mess with them. There's stories that fishermen would do that to find a wife and to keep her. But it's not a good idea. They always want to go back. S some, though, want to marry humans so that having children with human blood might make it so that their children can go to heaven. That goes back to the other story. These are similar to the Banshee because they can also be harbingers of death. So that's fairies, Irish fairies more specifically. Let me know in the comments if I got anything right, if I got anything wrong, or if you have some stories of fairies which you would like to share. I've enjoyed revisiting these Irish fairies. Portions of this script are from an essay I have previously published. At the end of this video, please see the bibliography where I cite my sources. Have a great day, everyone. Have a great day. And be certain, be certain to not mess with the good folk.